If your whole culture has taught you that you don't own anything, you will have a resentment of others who have it. And you will resent what it takes to get it. Because all your life, amen, you did not see yourself as an heir. You saw yourself as somebody who always just gets the leftovers. Amen, you didn't see yourself as somebody who can do something for yourself. Glory to God, friends, and welcome to the overflowing life. You know, this is the beginning of the year, at least we're in the first quarter of the year, and a lot of people are focusing on their goals, their objective, and their vision. You know, if we're going to be successful in our vision, we're going to have to have what I like to call a visionaire mentality. What do you mean by that, Bishop? Well, there's an old saying that there are three kinds of people. There are people who watch things happen. There are people who wonder what happened, and there are people who make things happen. The visionary is the one who makes things happen. This message today is going to bless you, so get your Bible, pen, and paper. Go along with us, because you're going to learn how to develop the visionary mentality. We'll be right back. Your mentality will eventually become your reality. Say out loud, my mentality will eventually become my reality. So you have to be careful. You, you don't let anybody else choose that for you. You can't choose your circumstances. You can't choose your environment. You can't choose how people treat you, but you can choose your mentality. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, when it comes to the aspect of vision, there are three prevailing mentalities or categories into which we all ultimately fall. We all gonna fall in one of these categories. Now, we all gonna, everybody say, we all in one of them. I found this same thing to be true in life. There are generally three categories of people that you find. Number one are those who make things happen. Everybody say, make things happen. Then you got those that watch things happen. And then you got those that wonder what happened. <laughs> Everybody say, make things happen. Watch things happen. And wonder what happened. See, those are the three prevailing mentalities when it comes to a vision. See, Jesus even understood this when he gave the parable of the sower. He talked about the different kinds of soil. He understood that he was going to encounter different kinds of people. And so he understood that this is a process. You have to keep repeating it over and over and over again because you've got different kinds of soil. You've got different kinds of mentalities. And so you have to repeat the same things over and over again. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, ask yourself a question. Which one of these is you? Yeah, there are those who make things happen, there are those who watch things happen, and there are those who wonder what happened. Now, we can carry this analogy a step further by saying we can choose to be one of these three things. We can be a faith stander, we can be a bystander, or we can be a grandstander. Everybody say a faith stander, a bystander, or a grandstander. Yeah, so you can, you can be one of these three. Amen. And so uh, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Because God tells us, you know, that we ought to be faith standers. Somebody shout a faith stander. Amen. Yeah, God wants us to be a faith stander. He wants us to be the kind of people, amen, who live by faith. So now let's notice what he says here in Habakkuk chapter 2. And uh, it, the people haven't changed. It was the same way back in the days of Habakkuk. You had these three different categories of people. So notice what he says here, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain up on tablets, that he may run that what? Readeth it. For the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not, up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by what? His faith. The just shall live by his faith. So Habakkuk is seeing the same thing here. He sees these three different categories of people. Amen. He sees the bystander. Amen. A bystander is a person who just sits around and watches things happen. He's just a bystander. He's just an observer. That person does not get involved. And then you got the grandstander. 
The grandstander is the one who takes credit and really did nothing. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. The grandstander is the one that really didn't think it going to happen. And they wonder how it happened. They sitting there in the middle of it and, and shouting with everybody else, but they really, they, when we do that, how did that happen? Come on, somebody. How you, anybody ever seen a grandstander? A grandstander pretends they are involved, but they really not. A grandstand that's there for the trophy, but they really had nothing to do with it. In fact, they really didn't think it gonna happen. That's why they wonder. Everybody say they wonder. Amen. They wonder how it happened. They they not even they shot when it happened. Amen. 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 I don't know if y'all were watching. Amen on election night. Mr. Trump was as surprised as everybody else. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Who me? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he, he wondered how it happened. Now, y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm, not, I'm just using it as an example. You got to understand that, that sometimes you got people, amen, they didn't really think it going to happen themselves. And so they are grandstanders. Everybody say grandstanders. Amen. You got folk like that on sports teams. Amen. You know, everybody else got out there and, and won the victory. Amen. But they get a chance. They, they all hollering now. They weren't saying nothing until it happened. But then when it happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they doing the dance and jumping around and everything else. Everybody said they grandstanding. Grand. Oh, yeah, that's the grandstanders that's going to come around. But God really wants us to be faith standards. Everybody say a faith stander. Faith. The Bible says these are the people, amen, who walk by faith. Amen. They're standing on their faith. Even when it looked like it's not going to happen, they keep standing on their faith. Even when people ridicule them and said, amen, it cannot happen, they keep standing by faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a question for you. Where you standing? Uh-oh. Turn to your neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, I got a question for you. Where are you standing? Yeah, because either we're going to be a bystander or we're going to be a grandstander or we are going to be a faith stander. Amen. We have to understand that God wants us to stand on our faith. He said, I will stand on my watch. I will stand and see what the Lord will say unto me, and then I'm going to stand by faith. How many faith standers we got in the house today? I said, how many faith standers we got in the house? Yeah, a faith stander not only stands on the word, but they stand with their visionary. Oh, I heard that. I heard that. Amen. They stand with their visionary. Glory to God. They don't just, they stand by faith on the word. That's where you get established. But the Bible said, believe his prophets and so shall you what? Prosper. Amen. You cannot just say, well, I'm standing on the word, but you got to stand with your visionary. You got to believe, amen, that the things that are coming out of his or her mouth shall surely come to pass. I want you to turn to your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, I got to know this now. Where are you standing? Ask them again. Say, are you just a bystander? Are you a grandstander? Or are you a faith stander? Oh, yes, glory to God. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. Faith standers have a visionary mentality. Faith standers have a what? Visionary mentality. They understand that if they don't run with the visionary, the vision will become stationary and it will give place to the adversary. Okay, y'all got to grab hold of that now. See, a visionary understands if I do not, everybody say, if I do not, amen, if I do not run with the visionary, the vision will become what? Stationary, and it will give place to the what? Adversary. See, you have to understand, see, the devil will get in when it looks like stuff ain't happening. That's when he gets in, see. I, don't, I wonder, ain't, ain't nothing happened to me. They've been talking about that balcony a long time. I don't know it. They've been talking about that a long time. They've been talking about that going double a long time. See, but you have to understand, we have an obligation. Listen, we have an obligation to run. Everybody say run. We have, the Bible said write the vision, make it plain that they may what? Run. That they may run with it. That they may what, what? Run with it. That means they are a part of it. Yeah, that's what a visionary does. A, a visionary does, a visionary makes the decision, I'm going to run. Everybody say, I got to run. Now, let me say this. <laughs> if you become stationary, it won't be long be before you become an adversary. I'm going to go on and say that again. If you become stationary, 
It won't, be, it won't be long before you become an adversary. See, it's a dangerous thing not to run with division. Now, you didn't start out an adversary, but the longer you remain stationary, you will eventually become an adversary. You will eventually become a critic. Come on now. I know the folk that don't run with you. Amen. They'll try to slow you down. Oh, I've heard, I heard the Holy Ghost on that. Folk that ain't running with you, they're slowing you down. Y'all know those songs we used to sing in the Baptist church? If you can't help me, please don't stop me. Get out of my way. Don't try to block me. I got a race to run, and I'm running by faith. At the finishing line, I got to see God's face. Somebody shout hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better realize when you become stationary, it won't be long. If you're not careful, you'll become an adversary. That's a dangerous thing about becoming stationary. That's a dangerous thing. I don't know about that. See, if you're not careful, the devil will start using your mouth. Amen. To cause other people to stumble. The Bible said when people can't see what God is doing, they start stumbling. And when they start stumbling, they make other folks stumble. They begin to say things they ain't got no business saying. Amen. They get other folk to stumble. Just because you're stumbling, you just get out of the way. Come on, somebody. Don't make somebody else stumble just because you're stumbling. I feel it coming on. Lift both, lift both hands to heaven. Say, Lord, help me not to become stationary. Help me to run with my visionary so that I will not give place to the adversary. See, so let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about the devil. He might start out attacking somebody else, but then he's going to attack you. Don't you ever think, well, I tell you, I ain't with that mess they're doing. I ain't. Well, guess what? You're going to start doing something and God ain't going to be with you either. Huh? <laughs> Hear those songs, don't let the devil drive. Don't let him ride. Amen. It won't be long, he'll be driving. See, so you got to understand, he might use you to hurt somebody else, but then he's going to turn around, he's going to hurt you. Because that's, a, that's how the devil operates. And so I got to make up my mind, whatever good thing I make happen for somebody else, God is going to help that to happen for me. I got to make up my mind, I'm going to run with my visionary. I want you to shout out loud, I'm running, I'm running. With, my with my visionary. I refuse, I refuse. to become stationary, stationary because I cannot, because I cannot. give place to the, to the adversary. Let's see if we can find this in the Word of God. Go to Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. Y'all know this is one of the scriptures we stand on for our COD. Amen. You have to understand, we, you know, you, you got an enemy out there. You got an adversary, but he cannot be effective unless he can do it from the inside. You know, the devil, he can't hurt you from the outside. The only way he can hurt you is what? From the inside. He can say what he, all he wants to on the outside. He got to get somebody in the camp to start talking. Amen. And so he's going to send folk like the one we're going to read about here in a minute. Now look here in Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 17. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we're in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we may be, what? No more reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my, in other words, I'm not doing, God told me to do this. I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. I got favor with God. As also the king's words that he has spoken unto me, got favor with man. And they said, let us rise up. Everybody say, let us. Yeah. See, this is what visionaries say. What do visionaries say? See, visionaries declare the vision, but then visionaries say what? Come on, say it out loud. Yeah. Do what? Yeah. I can't hear y'all. Yeah. I can't hear y'all. Yeah. I still can't hear y'all. Yeah. Stand up and shout it. Yeah. yeah. Now you know you got a visionary. Now you got a, it ain't gonna say let them. Let y'all. That ain't no visionary. Amen. That's a bystander or a grandstander. That is not a faith stander. See, a, a, a faith stander stands in faith with you. We get in agreement with each other. We're not coming out of faith until we see it happen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Get your copy of today's life-changing message. You can be in the middle of poverty, but you don't have to have a poverty mentality. 
Everybody around you, amen, can be broke, disgusted, and can't be trusted, but you don't have to have that mentality. Amen. All of your relatives, amen, could have been drug dealers and, and criminals, but you don't have to let that mentality be on the inside of you. Learn to live the life God designed for you when you order today's message by writing to us. Visit our website or call 1-800-465-6830. I shall but you. But you have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. In other words, when this thing get done, all you will have been is a bystander and a grandstander. But God will only reward the faith standard. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will reward the faith standards. Now let's finish. Visionaries see themselves as heirs. See, here's the whole thing that you got to, this is a mentality that, that all of us have to get. We have to see ourselves not just as servants, but as heirs. Say out loud, I'm an heir. Amen. In other words, whatever blessing that's going to come as a result of us finishing this, you are an heir of that blessing, but you're also an heir, listen, you are also an heir of everything that takes place. I hope y'all know, even though Pastor Jennifer and I are the visionaries, this, this property don't belong to us. This property belongs to all of you. But see, if you got the wrong mentality, come on now, if you didn't help get it done, you'll always have an outsider's mentality. Come on, somebody. You'll always have that outsider's mentality. You'll always have that, that feeling on the inside of you. Hey Amen. I was just a bystander. I was just a grandstander. I was not a face stander. And it will, it will dog you for the rest of your life because you have to have an heir. Everybody say, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. You, have to, you have to take ownership. You have to take ownership of the vision. When God speaks to your man or your woman of God, he's talking to you too. Say out loud, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. When you join this church, you became an heir of all the blessings that's going to come. But you also became an heir of everything that God called us to do, and you've got to have the right mentality. Turn to your neighbor and say, your mentality got to be right. Listen, listen, listen. People don't mind giving to something that they feel they are an heir of. This is your building. It represents your God. It represents your labor. See, when, when you change the way you think, you'll give to it. You treat your house different than you treat a rent house. Now, you ought to respect anybody's property. Amen. But I ain't finna put no money in no rent house. Something go wrong, I'm finna call the landlord. They tell me, why don't you go ahead and fix that electrician, that electricity? No, I ain't, this ain't my house. Right. No, buddy, you own the house. I'm just renting. Come on, I'm, well, you really think I'm getting ready to invest in the roof when it starts leaking? This ain't my house. Do you really think I'm getting ready to go out there and take $20,000 and fix the roof and this house doesn't even belong to you? Amen to me. And that's the same way a lot of Christians are. You are hesitant to give because you don't think it's yours. Why shall I invest in something that's not mine? You got that them mentality. You got that they mentality. What they doing? No, buddy, what we doing? Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And now all of a sudden, it changes your whole mentality. You say, oh, yeah, I'm giving to that. Amen, because I'm an heir. Turn to somebody and say, I'm a visionary. Yeah, yeah, I'm a visionary. Amen. They see themselves as heirs of the vision and joint heirs with the visionary. They see the vision, watch this, as an avenue to being blessed rather than just simply assisting with a burden. So that, y'all may not think that's heavy, but it is. If I see this as an avenue of being blessed, it changes, it changes my whole attitude. But if I see it as just a burden that somebody has placed on me because I happen to be associated with them preachers, I'm going to become resentful. And every time I come to church, I'm so tired of them standing up trying to get enough. Are you tired of, of getting money for your house? 
I'm so tired of folk giving to me trying to get my house built. I'm so tired of folk giving to me as I'm believing for a new car. I'm so tired of people giving to me so I can raise my children. No, 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 because when you take ownership, it changes your whole mentality. My God, you won't be mad when you walk up in here and the man of God stands in front of you and said, let's receive the offering. Let's get the balcony bill. My God, you're going to be excited because you see yourself as an heir. You don't see it as a burden. You see it as a blessing. You understand I'm involved in something powerful. I can't wait to get to church because I am an heir. That building don't belong to Bishop Nim. That building belongs to me and my children and my grandchildren and the folk I invite to church. You don't want to invite no about no raggedy church. I'm going to go and say this. For too long, because of the ethnic things that have happened, we have not seen ourselves as heirs. You were brought over here on a ship that you didn't want to be on. You went to a plantation that you didn't want to be on. Later on, even when they set you free, you had to be a sharecropper. You still didn't own anything. You went and fought in a war and you couldn't vote. All these years, listen, this is not a, I'm trying to help you to understand now, you've got to get a hold of this. If you don't get a hold of this, you're going to miss it. If, your, if it's your whole culture has taught you that you don't own anything, you will have a resentment of others who have it. And you will resent what it takes to get it. Because all your life, amen, you did not see yourself as an heir. You saw yourself as somebody who always just gets the leftovers. Amen, you didn't see yourself as somebody who can do something for yourself. If everybody else can build buildings, you can build one. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And it don't have to take us 200 years to do it. Well, I'm a member of First Baptist Church. We started in 1807, and we finally got around to building the building in 2007. The devil is a lie. It don't have to happen if we all see ourselves as heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ and heirs of the vision. The vision is the way that God wants to get provision into your life. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. If you want to start seeing a flow of money come into your life, you've got to understand, I've got to connect with a vision because if I connect with a vision, God is obligated to send me provision. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Say out loud, I am a visionaire. I am an heir of the vision. I am a joint heir with the visionary. <laughs> Bystanders watch, grandstanders wonder, but face standers say, I'm with you. Face standers say, I'm what? With you. They don't watch, they don't wonder, they are with you. Say out loud, I'm with you. Let's close out. Let's run over the Acts. <laughs> Is this helping anybody? See, I know I'm dealing with a mentality. I don't mind discussing it. I don't offend other ethnic groups when I say that because they know it's true. They've been trying to get it over to you, too. <laughs> they want you to take ownership. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Everybody say visionaire. Let's see what it says here in Acts chapter 16. Now, y'all know Paul was the lead apostle, right? Amen. That means that he was the visionary. Somebody shout the visionary. See, now you've got to understand God is not obligated to talk to everybody. Amen. Because he knows everybody can't handle it. So God, when the Lord talked to me personally, that's when I'm going to get involved. He ain't going he, he to talk to you personally. When the Lord showed it to me, that's when he ain't going to show it to you. He didn't have to show it to you. He shows it to the visionary. What you've got to do, come on now, is let God show you your part. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, ask God to show you your part. Yeah, 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 you ain't got to see the whole thing. When the Lord let me see it, that's no, 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 God ain't going to show you the whole thing. Let me show you this. Y'all want to see it? Acts chapter 16 <laughs> and verse 
number nine, and, there, and a vision appeared to the whole church. Huh? The vision appeared to everybody. The vision appeared to who? Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had, after he what? Had seen the vision, immediately what? We endeavored. Huh? Didn't say, then we saw the vision. It didn't say that. He saw the vision, but we what? Endeavored. In other words, we did our part. We grabbed hold and said, okay, if the man of God said it, he heard from God, he got a track record, I believe he heard from God, so our job is to endeavor. Our job is to grab hold. Our job is to see ourselves as an heir of this vision. We following him, come on somebody, then we become an heir of whatever it is that God speaks to him to do. And so we what? Endeavor. We, we did? Immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us. What? Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called who? Us. Somebody shout us. us. Amen. And Nehemiah, they said, let who? Us rise up and build. See, you've got to understand God ain't got to talk to everybody about the vision, but he does talk to all of us about connecting to it, and that makes us a visionaire. Somebody shout a visionaire. Well, glory to God, friends. I know you were blessed by today's message. Listen, God wants you to know that you can have the visionaire mentality. That's right. You're the kind of person who makes things happen. Glory to God. You're the kind of person who turns your face loose and you make things happen. Listen, we want you to get this single message or you can get their entire series on reset. We want to rush it out to you and it's very simple to get. Just use the ordering information there on your screen. Go to our website or give us a call or you can write to us. And we want to rush this series or this single message. You designate which one you want. We'll get it right out to you because I know it's going to change your life in Jesus' name. Listen, all you ladies out there, it's a part, it's time for you to be a part of the upcoming A Call to Excellence Spring Retreat. Dr. Jennifer has some great things planned, and you want to join her in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. What a powerful time it's going to be as hundreds of ladies are going to gather from all around the country. So you stay tuned to the end of the broadcast. We'll get you information on how you can be a part of this life-changing meeting. Listen, our time's all up for today. Be sure to join us again next week for another powerful word right here on The Overflowing Life. Until then, remember these words. Keep living life to the full until it overflows. A Call to Excellence Revival Ministries presents the 2017 Spring Women's Retreat, Stronger Than, March 23rd and 24th in Atlanta, Georgia, at the beautiful Crown Plaza Atlanta Perimeter at Ravina, with host Dr. Jennifer Johnson, keynote speaker Kimberly Pothier, fitness and nutrition expert Tina Glass, and social media comedic sensation Miss Shirley. Registration is just $59. To register or for more information, visit a call to excellence.org.